from the Washington Post via mysanantonio.com. Workers getting laid off for second time as viruses surge closes businesses. When she was first furloughed in March, Randy Heitzman knew how to make ends meet. She deferred payments on her new Honda Civic, spent $3,000 in stimulus money and tax returns on other payments, and drained her savings. Then she was called back to her job as a bartender at a cigar bar near Dallas for five weeks, taking home about $100 per shift, just 20% of what she was used to. But on Friday, Heitzman was cut loose again, hours before her shift was to begin. I don't have any savings left. I don't know how long it's going to be before I get a paycheck again. Millions of American workers are suffering from economic whiplash, thinking they were finally returning to work only to be sent home again because of the coronavirus's latest surge. Stores, restaurants, gyms, and other businesses that reopened weeks ago are shuttering again, and this time, Congress appears less inclined to provide additional aid. Other businesses that had banked on customers returning and restrictions lifting, such as hotel chains, construction firms, and movie theaters, are seeing hours cut and reopening dates pushed back indefinitely as consumer demand stalls. And many governors, including some who had drawn scrutiny for initially playing down the virus's risks, are issuing new safety restrictions. In some cases, safety restrictions, really. Is that what you call them? In some cases, just weeks after the first round of guidelines had begun to lift. In recent weeks, three states, California, Florida, and Texas, have implemented policies that partly restrict restaurant or bar service. Nine others, Arkansas, Delaware, Idaho, Louisiana, Michigan, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Carolina, have postponed or slowed reopening plans. And, you know, that's just start, uh, scratching the surface. You know, here in Arizona, if we skip ahead to AP, the Associated Press, Arizona faces new closures as hospitals prep for virus surge. Arizona hospitals are hiring out-of-state nurses, squeezing in more beds and preparing for the possibility of making life and death decisions about how to ration care as they get ready for an expected surge of coronavirus patients in one of the nation's worst hotspots. Sound familiar? Isn't this what they did for the first wave? Hmm. Hiring out-of-state nurses. Now, I would I, I would be guessing that this is a regular. Hospitals are always hiring. Like there, a, a lot of nurses I know, by the way, are traveling nurses. It's a cool gig. If you have the medical certification, um, one of my friends, she lives in an RV, a fifth wheel, and just st st spends three months somewhere, lives in an RV park, works as a nurse. Goes to another place where they're so they're hiring out of state nurses, squeezing in more beds. Hospitals are probably always squeezing in more beds. Is this for like again? You you, it's so easy to cherry pick facts and distort reality and sensationalize little aspects just by presenting things out of context. Preparing for the possibility of making life and death decisions about how to ration care. They're kind of doing that you know, all the time anyway, right? Well, that's just part of the medical industry. You know, you got to make life and death decisions all the time. And right now, if there's the possibility of a surge, you got to go, oh, if there's a surge, how are we going to ration care? Parents, teachers, businesses, and their customers are also hunkering down for at least a month of new closures imposed by the state in a belated effort to slow the spread of the virus and limit overcrowding at hospitals. Arizona and several other states that were reopening their economies have clamped back down over the past week as they eclipse, eclipse records for infections and hospitalizations. Republican Governor Doug Ducey, however, went further than others by ordering gyms and movie theaters to close and postponing the start of school until mid-August. I was supposed to go to the gym last week. I, didn't, I never needed to leave the property. But I was like, I need to go to the gym just to celebrate them being reopened in Chino Valley. No, nope, apparently not. So, you know, back to the Washington Post story, you know, because this is this is a lot more than just these nine others. I really think, you know, the, I, I read this story from Washington Post and it says nine other states have postponed or slowed reopening plans. I guarantee you it's a lot more than it's not like Arizona's. Oh, I found one. No, 
This is what I'm hearing in most states. You know, and it, it doesn't even... Uh, you know, it says Florida have, have, have implemented policies, but it, they say they're postponed or slowed reopening plans. It, it's most states in the country at this point. Thousands of workers are caught in these rapidly shifting seas, many of them hourly and low wage service employees and are now facing unemployment for a second time. They say the past few months have been jarring navigating unemployment in March, preparing to go back to work in April or May, and now confronting the prospect of what could be another long stretch without a paycheck. This time, many say they're on even shakier financial ground as they topple into yet another period without a job. They face what experts have been calling a fiscal cliff. The July end date for the $600 in weekly supplemental aid that has helped kept keep so many families afloat. As Heitzman said, luckily I have rent for this month, but after that, I don't know. She pays $1,200 for a one bedroom apartment. Now, I think there's a big silver lining in this. I'm really excited that, you know, while that, that, as long as people are suffering at the hands of government, let their suffering be properly understood. When this happened once, people could kind of write it off. And you're right, it happens once and you go, oh, crap. All right, I have no savings anymore. Uh... You know, I'm, I've, I've done everything I can to, to postpone bills. Now I'm really behind. But it was a freak occurrence, right? It was just this one-time thing. Government got carried away. It was this fluke virus. It'll never happen again. And then it happens again. <laughs> I'm not happy that it's happened. I'm not happy that people are suffering again. But I'm hoping that there is, there's a silver lining here.